All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from just up the coast in uh, Northern California in the Bay Area of San Francisco by Richard Harris. How are you doing, Richard? I'm good, John. Thank you for having me. And uh, I kind of wish I was down in San Diego. I mean, the weather's beautiful up here, but I can always use a, a warmer beach area than, than Northern California. Yeah, well, as you know, uh, California, everything we've had, uh, um, we've had terrible weather. I mean, comparatively speaking, but I yeah. can only I can only talk to another Southern California or even Californian about that, because anybody else outside of this area, if you complain about the weather, they have no sympathy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree. Yeah. So Richard is a three times sales for sales influencer and the co-host of the surf and sales podcast, building go to market strategies with founders and teaching sales reps how to earn the right to ask questions, which questions to ask and when and when is the primary driver for Richard with over 20 years experience with having done all the roles, the SDR role, AE manager, director, VP of sales sales ops, the whole thing. I'm working with uh, Fortune brands as well as startups, including Zoom, Salesforce, Human Interest, Dusty Robotics. That's my favorite. Just I like the yeah. name. And, yes, it's uh, a fun one, by the way. It's super <laughs> cool. And he's also the co-founder, as we said, of Surf and Sales, uh, as well as host of the book uh, or the podcast. And he's authored the new book, The Seller's Journey. And this yeah. is what we're going to talk about today, because we hear a lot about the buyer's journey. And yes. how you should focus on the buyer's journey. And I probably said that myself on many occasions. And uh, Richard is here to tell us that uh, we're wrong. The buyer's journey doesn't exist. It's only the seller's journey. Only yes. the seller's journey. So, Richard, uh, have at it. Tell me why why it's a seller's journey and not a buyer's journey. Yeah, no, I, and I appreciate it. Um, and I, by the way, I perpetuated this thing too, right? <laughs> I, I totally said, oh, the buyer's journey, the buyer's journey. And I finally realized that we don't buy something on a journey that we create we've had an experience that makes us want to change something or purchase something and it's that experience that takes us on a journey and then that journey was actually created by sales and marketing mm -hmm. right and it's our experience through the journey that makes us decide what to buy Right. Like if you think about it, I want to something happen. I need something. So I go to Amazon. Well, if I have a crappy experience or can't find what I'm mm -hmm. looking for, I go find the other thing. Like last night, literally, I had to go buy my kids some sports shorts and I literally typed in Nike sports shorts for teen boys. Right. And of course, it pops up all this other stuff that's not the Nike stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So granted, it's Amazon so they can get away with frustrating me. Um but it wasn't the experience that I really wanted. And if it were anybody else other than Amazon, mm -hmm. I might have bailed. So for me, it's about we choose things not just because of what we need help with, but how we're treated along the way. Like you've been in sales. Everybody who's been in mm -hmm. sales long enough knows that you can win business based on how you do business. Yes. Human to human as you do comparatively to your competitor. Like you can be overpriced compared to someone else, but the experience is different. And that's a big piece. So that's why I harped on this. And, and of course I needed something controversial to talk about <laughs> to sell books. So but yeah. that's 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 really the concept of it. Yeah. I, I I like it though. I like what you're saying because I, I always come back to this example that I had I, I took over a comp running a company some years back, Hothway, it was spin selling, Neil Rackham's uh mm -hmm your book and uh, so we were a sales consulting company and the first thing i did was i went and visited our top customers as you do uh, mm -hmm. when you take over something and the feedback i was always got for them is that love your products love everything that you do we really love you but you're really hard to do business with mm -hmm. and that was the thing that i was scratching my head i was like what does that even mean and then i discovered sure we had everything set up from an internal perspective to make life easy mm -hmm. for us Yes. But actually difficult for buyers. Yes. Right. And that's so they had a horrible experience through a journey you created. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. and that's what I'm trying to get at. Right. Like that's that's the whole theme. And and so I I think we've all had that challenge. Right. It's like, why do I make this so hard for my customers? Yeah. Which often turns around to go, which you even realize, like at some point you're probably like, 
boy, we built that, but we even made it harder on ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh yeah, if we make it easier for them, it makes it easier for us. Yeah, that's a good thing. You know, yeah. So, so, so in this, in this concept of like, uh, you know, the experience, if we focus on the experience for a moment, right. Mm -hmm. It means that all the parts of your organization need to be aligned. It's not just, you know, because it, it's, it can't, it's not just down to sales because the experience mm -hmm. that the person has when they interact with, with your website, with your organization, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe they're taking a trial of your product and they have a problem. Mm -hmm. So the interaction they have with your support. And I think sometimes we, we love to kind of demark these things somehow and think that, mm -hmm. you know, well, that's the selling, that's an experience you're in the selling process that's mm -hmm. separate from all these other things. You're thinking, no, as you said, it's, it's the experience encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. And this, the more simple it is, the easier, like, you know, if you think about Google, right, they hit this so early right compared to yahoo and mm -hmm. alta vista you and i are old enough to know those yeah yeah um <laughs> I'm old, I'm yeah. Old, as we were discussing we both have a silicon valley yeah. background from the yeah, old yeah. days the dot-com days yeah. i have been yeah. i visited both alta vista yahoo netscape I've yeah been in all of those buildings yeah and so and so you know even today if you go to google's to start it's a simple landing page mm -hmm. right if you go to chat gpt it's a simple landing page now, if you're a commerce site or something like what you do or what I do, it can't be that simple, but we do need to make it simple. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, and it's now on the flip side of that, Yahoo or Bing is a different experience. Right. I go to Yahoo or Bing because I do kind of want to scan the news real quick or scan, you know, the sports or whatever before I do my search or whatever it is. But, you know, so, so it, this is what it means for me about this experience is figuring out what's the right experience for your customer and your prospects, mm -hmm. you know, and wrapped around all this, by the way, is, is this, you know, bringing humanity back into sales. Yes. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it, you know, we go through these cycles every few years of, of, you know, the sales stack and the tools and the creation. And we're going through the AI version of that, right? Like <laughs> seven or eight years ago, it was, it was the, 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 sales and engagement platforms and sales loft and outreach and, you know, mm. gong and all that stuff. Um, and now we're going through this next iteration and every time there's a moment where humanity gets lost yeah. and reapplied and then the new tools come out and it removes the humanity. Yeah. Yeah. And no. so it's, that's sort of where, where this sellers and buyers experience matters to me is how do we do it in a human way? Yeah, uh, no, I I, I agree. I agree totally with you. It's like um, we've leveraged technology to keep everybody at an arm's length uh, and which is counterintuitive to actually what you're yeah. trying to do is which is build a relationship. But we've decided we can leverage technology to keep it at arm's length until you basically wave a check or, you know, throw it over. And then we're, we're, right. we're happy to talk to you then. But you're right. It's the it, it's it's. In, and it's so going back to what you were saying about simple. It's so simple. It's like people mm -hmm. want to be people want to be seen, heard, and understood, right? But they want they want to interact with other human beings. They you mm -hmm. know they regardless mm -hmm. of how how much the technology helps, and it obviously does. There has to be that human element. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And I think that's the piece. Again, AI is going to help us. Can help us be better at it now. Mm -hmm it now cannot yet fully replace the human. Mm -hmm. And at what point will it replace the human? We're being conditioned for it to replace the human. Yep. Right. Like what do you, what do you think Amazon is? Like when was the last time I took my kids shopping for clothes and made him try on something? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, he came in, literally he came in complaining last night. Are you guys buy the wrong thing. I don't trust you to buy the right thing. I'm like, okay, well then we need to go shop. I don't want to go shop. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Like, all right, well, stop watching other people play video games on YouTube. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never understand that one, but that's okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah, it, the, the, yeah. The, the, the human part of it, uh, the human part of it, um, Richard is like, and it's funny because it, it, and, and this is what always cracks me up nowadays. It's like the bar is set so low, right? That if you actually, if you actually try to put a human face on it, if you try to focus on the human part of it, 
you're actually going to stand out, which is kind of sad. <laughs> That's genius. Oh my God. I love that. That is, that is perfect humor of like the bar is so low that if you even just put a human face on it, you might actually be better than your competitor. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I love it. Yes. Agree. <laughs> so how do you go about that when you work with your clients? Like, how do you go mm -hmm. about that? Making sure that they are, they're giving the best experience to the buyer and the, you know, the, yeah. the, if they're going on a selling, if they're going to take them on a selling journey, how mm -hmm. are you going to do that in, in an optimum way where they feel seen, heard, understood, valued, et cetera. Right. Yeah. So, um, <sighs> tell me if I get too tactical. Um, but it, it really starts with that, that first moment. Right. And, you know, my mom always has always said that she can tell exactly how the call is going to go just based on the way I say hello when, she, right. when, she, when I pick up the phone. Right. Because that's what moms do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, your customers are already anticipating something like that to a certain extent. Um, they're, they're already walking in with a bias about uh, yep. it's a sales call, even if they've requested the sales call. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so for me, the thing that I the first thing I teach people is I teach them about active listening like what does it mean to actively listen how not only what do you do to actively listen how do you show your prospects and customers you're actively listening how do you show it how do they visibly know that you're doing that in addition to hearing you doing it and so i i, I literally teach people like you know at the beginning of a meeting it's okay for you to say hey you know uh john you're over here you know, my camera's here, you're over here. And if you see me looking down, I'm taking notes. I promise yeah. I'm, I'm going to send you these notes. Yeah. Even though everybody says, well, yeah, we already know that. We know that. I was like, no, but you need to say it mm -hmm. because as soon as someone stops looking down, everybody else will too, because mm -hmm. they'll assume you're allowed to do that. Right. So we do this whole exercise, a very simple exercise on that. I then do things, what I call a respect contract, right? You know, we confirm things like time and goals of the conversation and the potential outcomes. And we create a social contract of how we're going to talk to each other. And then, you know, and then you transition. And so what, what, what got you here? Like, wow. what, what, you know, what, what made you want to have this conversation today? So doing those things that that happens in like two minutes. Yeah. I've but now so earned the so right. Incredible. The I just need to come back to that. I just want to come back yeah. to that concept that you just had of the social contract there. Yeah. And, and, and so what you've outlined in the first couple of minutes is a completely different approach to setting up, you know, the rest of the call or the rest of the meeting or whatever it is. I'm just, I'm yeah. just fascinated. Or all future that. meetings. Yeah. Right. Like I, I want them, like I will come in and I will immediately say, look, I've got us down for 30 minutes. Does that still work? And you'll say, sure. And mm -hmm. I'll go, great. Do you have any hard stops? No, I don't. But, you know, we can go over if we want or yes, I do. And I'll be like, whatever that answer is, I don't care. I say, great. Well, you know what? Why don't we do this? Let's just call a timeout in 25 minutes and we'll just see where we're at. Yeah, right? I like that. And everybody says, okay, because two things happen. One, I need to be reminded to put a timer on my phone to mm -hmm. shut up in 25 minutes because <laughs> I talk too much. And two, there's nothing worse than getting to the end of a call and having someone go, oh, you know what? Just email me next week and we'll set up the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. I want, I need that five minutes. They need that five minutes to, to make sure we can wrap it up. And then the, the human element around this is that I'm showing them that I'm respecting their time, no matter what they said. And equally I'm respecting my time because my time is valuable too. Yeah. You know? And so that's the and so that's just the first part of the experience i want them to have and that happens in 15 or 20 seconds mm -hmm. and i'm different hopefully good salespeople know how to do this like uh, this is yeah. nothing earth shattering right you've been around long enough like but, you know this is nothing earth shattering but it's like it's a lost art yeah it's it's as i said again the bar has been set very low um, because people yeah. have lost this art the other thing that you just uh, the other thing that you said there about the uh you know, even the note taking and that the just that element of res, of respect and sort of saying, listen, I'm just going to explain if I'm looking down, I'm just right, taking mm -hmm. a note. I'm not drawing mm -hmm. some wonderful doodle here. Right. Uh, I'm not on LinkedIn. I'm not you know, yeah, yeah. responding to someone else's email. But you also mentioned the other thing, too, though, and I think that's incredibly important is that you're respecting their time but you're also communicating that your time is valuable because you want to have a peer to peer interaction. And I feel yes. like too often 
too often do some salespeople go in with this thing thinking that they're in a subservient role and that comes off from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I again, a hundred percent. And, um, you know, if, if, if anybody is a fan or doesn't know about transactional analysis, which was created by, uh, Eric Byrne back in the fifties, it talks about ego states. And mm -hmm. I talk about this a lot in my book and, and, you know, every human's a human, they're allowed to judge you. They're allowed to like you. They're allowed to hate you. They're allowed to see if you're right, to see if you're wrong. They're allowed to see if you're the, if there's our pros and cons around you. And so again, if you understand how humans operate at a human level, that's the first step, as you said, of showing up a little slightly more humane way <laughs> and, and raising above the bar. Right. So, so it's all super critical to me that this mindset stuff is, is the first thing to tackle. Mm -hmm. Um, as much as it is tactics, right? Yeah. And then you mentioned the active listening. And I think that's, again, it's like, uh, it's like something that people feel like th they think they know about. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that we have become so distracted and so easily mm -hmm. distracted now. I mean, have you, you've probably had a conversation, like a face to face conversation with somebody, and you're having that conversation and their phone buzzes on like a text or mm -hmm. something. And they mm -hmm. don't see any issue with looking down at it, interrupting mm -hmm. the conversation, looking down at it, perhaps mm -hmm. even answering it, then looking back and continuing the conversation yeah. while you're there going, for real? Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, we will do the same thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not above being I'm not above yeah. being that person. You know, I yeah. think Simon Sinek said it best. Um, I, can't, I saw it a couple of years ago where he said, you know, the rudest thing you can do is when you're with someone is to take your phone out and put it face down on the table because <laughs> face down on the table means it's not important unless it buzzes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's like, because then once it buzzes, we're going to look at it yep. as opposed to like putting it in your pocket mm -hmm. or even look, if you're going to look at your phone, you know, don't be stupid. Just put it face up. Just acknowledge who you are live in your moment kind of a thing. <laughs> so, um, and, and by the way, I'm as guilty as anybody else yeah. about this. So I'm not here to preach to everybody that I'm perfect. And, yeah, you know, no, I, I, I'm, I, I, I agree, but I am perfect. I never do it. I swear. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. So I have my fingers crossed on that one, yeah. but, but on the active listening part though, I mean, what is fascinating is that, and people don't realize like active listening, listening, it's also a fantastic like respect and validation thing too because mm -hmm. if i'm listening to you richard and i keep and i come back every so often and say i just want to be 100 percent clear on what you said there i want to make mm -hmm. sure i understood what you were saying mm -hmm. so i i mean for me that's that's that shows number one you listened and number two that you mm -hmm. really want to understand yeah and and i say it's like our our job in sales you know is to understand their perspective from within their headspace, mm. right? We all have our ICPs and we all know our, these are our ideal companies and our ideal profiles. And, you know, marketing's made this grid that, you know, Rebecca is probably this age and she has a management of this and these are her concerns. It's like, I can read that and memorize that till the cows come home. But until I sit down and go, well, Re Rebecca, you know, you know, I've done my research. I kind of know what's going on, but what's really going on? What's your perspective? Cause I don't want to make any assumptions. Right. Yeah. And, I want them to know that I'm caring about them as the human and their role than I am just their pain because that's the decision people have to make. People have to make a, ch a choice between who do I trust and that who could be which company, it could be which salesperson. Who do I trust that understands me and the things I'm responsible for? Mm -hmm. right that's what matters and and you can only do that through active listening right yeah. and asking clarifying questions or repeating back hey if i heard you correctly or you know shutting down all the windows or here's another one turning off your slack so it doesn't beep while you're in the middle of a meeting mm -hmm. right all those little distractions that can pop up you know people don't notice that you turn slack off they do notice when you <laughs> left it on. if you left it on. Yeah, no, yeah. Ab absolutely. And, uh, and, and just one, one, uh, and just one last thing I think is, uh, and again, I, I, 
it is it is so interesting you know about that that human element in it and just reintroducing that that human element because as you said you know ai can do a lot of things and we're told ai is going to do a lot of things but and today i think people use a lot of tools and they gather a lot of information and they have background information as you said and they have intent data and they have this and that but what none of those technologies will do for you is understand the emotional investment that the other person has, that the buyer yeah. or the buyers and the different and the different motivations that each of them may have. If you're dealing with the buying committee, uh, mm -hmm. it, it will never tell you that stuff that you ha you can only find through good questioning, listening, perception wise, mm -hmm. all of those, all mm -hmm. of those very human things. Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. Um, and I, I, can I give out one tactic and tip yeah, please. that talks about active listening in a, in a, in an exploratory way, you know, every person you and I know, we go to a sales call and we know that the end of that conversation is they're going to take it back to their team and get an opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've all been taught. I've used to teach it too, of like, Oh, who's the decision maker? Who's on the team? Can I be a part of that meeting? Blah, like all mm -hmm. this terrible stuff. And none of that matters. Right. And this is a way to proactively, actively listening, actively listen while asking a different question, which is to be able to turn around and say, so, John, you know, um, when you take this back to your team, because I know that's what you're going to do, who's the most skeptical person on the team and what are they skeptical about usually? Mm. Right. And so I'm now probing a very good question because it doesn't matter who the decision maker is till I get through all the skeptics. Yep. Yep. That's why there's a committee. And so when I do that, like even you did it, you went, Hmm, that's a good question. Hmm. Let me think about that. They will do the same thing and they will start to tell you information that you can actively listen really well for, and then turn around and say, so, okay. So if they think about it that way, would it be helpful if I shared this with you so you can share yeah. it with them? Yeah. Right. So I, I, you know, I, I just, I'm a big tactical guy and I know we're talking a lot about this concept of active listening. I wanted to make sure listeners could kind of go, Oh, that's something I can go use. Like I, I'm just that kind of guy. Like I, I like to give out. Tactics. Yeah, no, and everything you've said is, is immediately usable to be honest. Um, right. But that, but that's a great one too, because, uh, uh, yeah, because human nature also being what it is, is the, the, the skeptic tends to have, yes. a, tends to be listened to more than the cheerleaders often. Absolutely. Even the champion, even the champion. Right? Yeah. You don't, you don't need to, you don't need to know who your champion is. You need to know who your skeptic is. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And often, and as you know, sometimes when you turn, when you turn the skeptic into uh, the champion, you know, champion, exactly. Then they become yes. the reformed smoker. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we need to go hang out and have a beer somewhere, man. Yeah. Like that is too funny. Absolutely. Too funny. Well, listen, Richard, all of Richard's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. So, um, you know, I have go to market uh, strategies for founders and founder led sales, as well as sales training um, for teaching reps how to earn the right to ask questions, which questions to ask and when. When. Wrote a book called The Seller's Journey. Uh, it's on Amazon. Uh, it has a money back guarantee. Yes, if you don't like it, I will Venmo your money back. And mm. if people want to get a hold of me, because everybody likes to ask, yes, you can find me on LinkedIn. But my real cell phone number is 415-596-9149. 415-596-9149. I know it's the real number because it's the one my kids ignore when I call them. <laughs> from it. Uh, but yeah, text me and let me know you heard me on John's podcast and uh, I'll gladly have a conversation with you. Yeah. And listen, go ahead and check out the book. It'll be also linked to below. And uh, yeah, so if you checked your kids' phones, you're probably in under, you know, instead of your name, it probably just says ignore. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I used to, even, even though we're Jewish, you know, we we're Jew, we're more ish than Jew. Yeah. Uh, but my wife and I would change our our names and our phones to Santa, so we would call each other and show the kids that Santa was calling. So, <laughs> I love it. Know. That's a great one. So, yeah. <laughs> Probably doesn't work as well now, but anyway. No, no, but that's all right. Yeah. It works. It works. So, all right. Well, listen. Thanks again, Richard. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you, John. Yeah.